Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to all of you. Today is Monday. I am Drishti and we are back again with you another session of current affairs of topics related to polity and governance. Before we get started, could you guys please comment and let me know whether I am audible or not. Could you guys let me know whether I am audible or not? Okay, let us get started. Right. So, today we are going to discuss a couple of very important topics which were in news in past couple of weeks. So, before we get started, uh, I hope you know we started this new initiative for you where we give you a question related to your seize the mains right daily the subjects we are covering uh, with you in the session based on that we give you a question and uh, a bit a little bit uh, about the topic is discussed in the session about it and then in evening you get another video where the whole answer for the question is discussed so we have been getting tremendous response for you from you guys and uh, just to improve your answer writing skills you can <laughs> write the <laughs> sorry you can <coughs> write the answer and post it on our website uh, for which the link you can find down below in the description box right the question for today is depriving prisoners prisoners their right to vote prisoners their right to vote good afternoon sir denying prisoners their right to vote undermines law and policy that is meant to rehabilitate and integrate prisoners comment so it's a 10 marker question uh, you have to write the answer in 150 words right so uh, the whole idea of prison reforms i have already discussed in detail if you haven't seen the previous videos please do watch them right <coughs> there have been a couple of committees and all a bit more we are going to discuss about prison and prison reforms today right so index dekh lete hain aaj ka what what all topics we are going to discuss today now first topic that we are going to discuss today is of voting rights of under trial prisoners so this is a burning topic right now and recently supreme court has intervened in this topic and there has been a debate going on that whether the prisoners who are awaiting their future who are awaiting whether they will be sentenced or they will be set out free are they eligible for voting or not right second topic is related to your cultural issue so uh, see in north language is not that big of a deal right uh, most of the people are hindi speaking people in a couple of different pockets we speak a different languages say uh, in punjab punjabi is spoken but they are very much similar to hindi but in down south language is a very important important part of your culture altogether and people associate their identity with their language so in down south in the state of karnataka a uh, bit of tussle is going on related to the <coughs> languages tulu and kodava so we are going to discuss a couple of things about that there has been draft canada language comprehensive development bill and how it is being challenged what are the issues associated with it we are going to discuss that then uh, recently one nation one is one police uniform uh, the idea for it has been promoted by prime minister modi and uh, there are a couple of more issues related to it we are going to discuss this in topic and then uh, we are going to discuss about late shri sham saran negi ji and uh, he recently passed away and may his soul rest in peace so a couple of things we are going to discuss about him right let's get started good afternoon everyone uh webhav uh, yes the current affair c current affairs in the morning what sir teaches you is uh, a combined compilation right so sir takes hindu daily fresh newspaper uh, he discusses topics related to various subjects and uh, this session of uh, which we do at uh, 2:30 so here we take the topics which are in news 
in past 10 to 1 week, okay, 10 days to 1 week and for them our main focus is on both prelims as well as mains and in morning Hindu, uh, the Hindu analysis with Certix, there is an overall analysis of the topics that are going and how they are interrelated to other aspects of your preparation, right? Where can I find previous playlist of this video? See, there is a playlist made of an uh, of it the whole uh, series that have been going on on our channel itself. You can visit the YouTube channel and there you can find the playlist. Right? Okay. Chalo, let's get started. So. The first topic that we are going to discuss is recently Supreme Court has decided to examine a poll law which deprives the under trials and civil uh, prison detainees their right to vote. The important part here is civil. Please note it down it's civil. Criminal nahi hai, civil hai. There is a difference between criminal detainees and civil detainees. Theke? Basic difference hai. I hope that is clear to you. Right. <coughs> so, Pehla, sabse pehla question that rises is what are, what is an under trial prisoner? See, under trial prisoner is someone who is awaiting the judgment, whose crime has not been proven yet or who hasn't been proven innocent yet. Thikhe? The person has not neither been proven guilty nor been proven innocent. So, he is still awaiting the trial. So, in the basic layman terms, that is what we call an <laughs> under trial prisoner. Also, there was a particular definition about the under trial prisoner in 78th report of law commission. Thikhe? And here they say a person who is in judicial custody or on remand during investigation in the uh, investigation that is also included in the uh, definition of under trial. So, you have to understand here even the people who are in preventive custody preventive custody they come under the concept of they come under the concept of your under trial prisoners right uh Weber, uh i'll address your questions after the session if that's okay right freedom uh I will address your uh, questions after the session. Thikhe? Let me complete the topics first. We will get back to you uh, again. Thikhe? Now, if you see the background about it, there was a petition which challenged the pro provisions in the election law which Im <laughs> impose a blanket ban, thikhe? altogether ban on under trials persons confined in civil prisons and the convicts who are serving their sentence in jails from casting their votes. Thikhe? So, the point here is, the issue here is someone who might be innocent whose right now <coughs> crime has not been proven. Okay. So, how that person can be barred from casting their vote which is the basic infringement of your fundamental rights. Ye ek major issue nikal ke aara hai. If we talk about ROPA, ROPA is in Representation of People's Act section 62. Section 62 of Ropa ki baat kare, the section it mandates that no person shall vote at any election, no person shall vote at any election is if, uh, if he is confined in a prison whether under a sentence or if the person is under the process of transportation or in the custody of police again. This has been continuously seen is in uh, it. Uh, this has been continuously seen in the direct conflict with your uh, fundamental rights, right, uh, Article 14. Now, prisons in India they come under state subjects and governments, state governments ke under aata hai. Also, they are governed by your Prison Acts 1984 and there are separate prison manuals of different states by which the prisons are governed. Right. So every <coughs> Every state has a different take on it. Now, if we talk about state-wise data of National Crime Records Bureau, NCRB data ki baat kare last year ki. So, UP has the maximum number of under trials in the country followed by Bihar and then Maharashtra. 
ठीक है उत्तर प्रदेश एनी हाउ ये वेस्टर्न यूपी वर्ल्ड में अ लॉर्ड ऑफ क्राइम हैज बिन गोइंग ऑन इट इज नोन एज द क्राइम कैपिटल इनफेमसली नोन एज द क्राइम कैपिटल सो देर हैव बिन अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल हु हैव बिन वेटिंग फॉर देयर जजमेंट टू बी पास एंड दे हैव बिन स्टॉप फ्रॉम कास्टिंग देयर वोट अब ये पूरा इशू क्यों निकल के आ रहा है बिकॉज देर हैव बिन अ लॉट ऑफ स्टेट्स देर आर अ लॉट ऑफ स्टेट्स वेर इलेक्शन आर ड्यू फॉर एग्जाम्पल इलेक्शन आर ड्यू इन हिमाचल ऑन ट्वेल्थ ऑफ नवंबर हिमाचल में क्राइम रिकॉर्ड इतना नहीं है बट स्टिल देर आर इलेक्शन ड्यू इन अ लॉट ऑफ स्टेट्स एंड इवन दिस सम हाउ रिलेट्स टू योर वोट बैंक पॉलिटिक्स वेर वोट बैंक पॉलिटिक्स वेर पीपल स्पेशली द पॉलिटिशंस वॉन्ट ये जो मेजर अनटैप्ड चंक है ऑफ द वोटिंग पॉपुलिस दैट शुड टेक पार्ट इन द इलेक्शन सो ये पिटिशन फाइल करी गई है लेट सी इसका आंसर क्या आता है इफ यू टॉक अबाउट चैलेंजेस दैट आर फेस्ड बाई अंडर ट्रायल प्रिजनर्स सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ अ पर्सन हैज कमिटेड अ क्राइम एंड द सेंटेंस दैट हैज बिन अवॉर्डेड दैट विल बी अवॉर्डेड फॉर इट फॉर द रिस्पेक्टिव क्राइम इज फाइव ईयर्स समटाइम्स इट हैपन्स दैट द प्रिजनर हैज टू वेट फॉर सो लॉन्ग द वेट इट सेल्फ uh exceeds the sentences limit uh, for example here in this particular case the wait itself exceeds your 5 years of time so that has been seen as a major issue also the amount of bail that which is set for a person to uh come out of jail is too high too much for an individual to bear people who are from well off families the most popular case was that of sanjay dat recently theek hai so they could pay it, but someone who belongs to uh, a bpl category middle class or a lower middle class the amount of bail set is too high so th- there also it hampers their basic uh, dignity right to ye ek issue nikal ke aa raha hai now if we talk about voting for preventive uh, preventive detainees while prisoners they are not allowed to vote people under preventive detention they can cast their votes through postal ballots पोस्टल बैलेट्स क्या होता है पोस्टल वोटिंग या फिर जिसको बैलेट्स बोलते हैं दीज आर आल्सो कॉल्ड इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली ट्रांसमिटेड पोस्टल बैलेट पेपर्स ईटीबीपी अंडर दिस द बैलेट पेपर्स आर डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली अगेन प्लीज रिमेंबर इलेक्ट्रॉनिकली टू इलेक्टर्स एंड देन दे आर रिटर्न टू इलेक्शन ऑफिसर्स वाया पोस्ट सो वाया पोस्ट दे आर रिटर्न टू देम नाउ मेजर इशू यहाँ पे क्या आ रहा है why this is being argued here you are comparing there is a direct comparison between people who have been detained people who have been detained just so that their crime could be decided whether they have committed this crime or not that could be decided with the convicts who are out on bail because already the convicts who are out on bail they are eligible to cast their vote right <coughs> they are eligible to cast their vote also there is no as such particular classification about the whole subject so there is a lack of reasonable classification also as i already told you this is direct and directly in conflict with your article 14 your fundamental right right what is article 14 i hope basics you guys know of polity please mention it in comments what is uh, article 14 Guys, I hope you have studied basics. What is Article Fourteen? Wow. Okay. ठीक है. Thank you, Nisar. Right to equality. Now there are a large number of population who are not voting again. This is concerned something with the vote bank politics. So that has been a point of contention even amongst the politicians. That's why even politicians somewhere directly. Uh, not uh, di- not directly but indirectly they have been pushing so that ye jo inmates not the inmates the prisoners the under trials they should be made a part of your voting populace recent improvements if we talk about there have been a couple of initiatives that have been taken in the judicial system so there has been set up a virtual court system particularly covid ke baad this came into prominence right so your all the trials are undertaken digitally then there is a e courts portal where the whole data everything is stored regarding to courts which cases are pending which comes under which section which ministry which department which uh sections are to be filed everything is there 
e-filing if you want to file a case for that also a proper setup has been made and things have become very very simplified then there is national judicial data grid where all the states the data of all the states their high court supreme court have been uh, put at one place altogether it's easily accessible even the common man can access it and get the basic knowledge of which case is at which status right now and when is the next trial due right then there is another initiative that has been taken which is known as national service and <coughs> tracking electronic processes so this is a centralized app basically for the bailiffs bailiffs kisko bolte hain people who are particularly engaged in the services of the courts for taking the custody of the said prisoner prisoner or under trial usko particularly bailiff bolte hain so what their duty is they uh send your summons they send the delivery of summons notices they process any number of uh, delays any number of unreasonable delays n number of unreasonable delays that happen during the trial period so this is the particular app which was made for bailiffs then there has been e seva kendra e seva kendra is one stop center for accessing all facilities which has been provided under your e courts project particularly set up in your high courts and district court of each state it was done on the trial basis and now it is uh it is under the process of being replicated in the whole country now then there is the talk of icjs interoperable criminal justice system so this is initiative of e committee basically to transfer data and information between different pillars of criminal justice system like police jails juvenile homes forensic science laboratories and etc which can be done hassle free theek hai so the basic intention was to do all these things hassle free still supreme court has been intervening on it and we are waiting a judgment over it let's see whenever uh, the result comes and if there is any development in the topic altogether we are going to discuss it again right now let's come ahead to our uh, move ahead to our second topic of the day it's draft data uh, draft kannada language comprehensive development bill 2022 so why this was a news this was a news recently because speakers of tulu and kodava tulu and kodava are the languages i'll tell you right now what are tulu and <laughs> kodava and why they are prominent right so they have opposed the draft of kannada language comprehensive development bill 2022 i already told you north india may most of the states are hindi speaking states dialects may difference ho sakta hai but the basic script is devnagari so there is not as such conflict north india may about the language but down south every state has their unique languages then they have different dialects and then there are sub sects of languages and they are an important part of the identity of people who are living there and that is something which is imposed on them is seen as a direct imposition on their right to freedom theek hai to details dekh lete hain kya hai now kodava takke ki baat kare so uh, i'm sorry if i'm pronouncing or mispronouncing the name now about kodava takke ki baat kare so this is a language which comes under dravidian group dravidian group of languages ke under aata hai and this is the original language of kodagu district in southern karnataka so kodava comes from the word kodagu theek hai kodagu se aaya hai c kodava kodagu in southern karnataka unesco already has listed it as one of the endangered languages so also the important point is here there is no separate script and traditionally this language is written only using the kannada script now if we talk about 2001 census 2011 ki baat nahi ho rahi hai this is about 2001 census if we talk about 2001 census kodava is spoken by less than less than 2 lakh people so this is something which is worrisome and people have been fighting a lot to save their language now if you talk about who are kodavas kodavas are a small martial community and again they live in kodagu district kodagu district is in southern karnataka <laughs> basically they uh, are a part of ethno linguistic tribe and they claim theek okay, hai it is said they are the original inhabitants of kodagu 
and occupationally they are the land owning agriculturists agriculturists now community this particular community has the rituals which revolve around guns and weapons like swords and there is a one there is one more very interesting point these there was a special privilege uh, provided to them bestowed upon them to own firearms without a license because this also was seen as the very important part of their cultural heritage right now if we talk about tulu two languages ka conflict chal raha hai one is kodagu and dusri is tulu now tulu is also a dravidian language and it is spoken in two two districts two coastal districts dakshin kannada and udupi udupi of karnataka dakshin kannada and udupi of uh, Karna, uh, Daksh, uh, district dakshin kannada and udupi of karnataka and kasargod district of kerala theek hai again down south as per census if we see even the um, number of tulu speaking people is very less in india also some scholars they suggest that tulu is amongst the earliest dravidian languages and it is the most evolved one with a history of more than 2000 years now there was a european in the, uh, late uh, 19th century sorry early 19th century robert caldwell he said in his book that a comparative grammar of dravidian or southern indian family of languages called tulu one of the most highly developed languages of the dravidian family so robert caldwell has pointed out tulu as one of the most evolved languages of the dravidian family now what is the issue with the bill bill to ban gaya <coughs> now this bill aims to ensure that the extensive use and propagation of kannada provides theek hai there is a extensive use and propagation of kannada also here what is being done is there are certain penalties imposed for violation of rules with fines and prescribed various offenses see same cheez ho rahi hai there ha, there was a opposition when hindi was being imposed in the uh, states down south so it's not just about hindi it's about their culture altogether their language altogether they are not even ready to get imposed with kannada as a language when they are tulu or kodava speaking people now important isme jo ek committee ka naam aata hai that is sr banurmath committee theek hai now in a bit to give legal framework a teeth and to various rules and regulation about the whole kannada supremacy thing this particular committee submitted this report report was of draft of the kannada language comprehensive development bill to the government and ultimately this will be put to the legislature soon and we will see how further more developments take place during this period what activists say about this is let's see point of contention kya hai tulu and kodava language <laughs> activists they have termed the bill threat to minority languages again cultural jo aapki identity hai us pe influence उस पे एज अंफ्रिंजमेंट इसको देखा जा रहा है दे हैव सॉट दैट वेरियस डायलेक्ट स्पोकन विद इन कर्नाटका शुड गेट प्रोटेक्शन अंडर द एम्बट ऑफ द बिल राइट सो नॉट जस्ट कन्नडा बट वेरियस लैंग्वेजेस दैट आर स्पोकन अंडर कन्नडा सी तूलू एंड कोडावा दे डू नॉट हैव देयर डिस्टिंक्ट लिपीज राइट डिस्टिंक्ट जो उनकी लिटरेचर है सॉरी नॉट लिटरेचर द राइटिंग प्रैक्टिस दे आर रिटर्न इन कन्नडा बट there is a dif- basic difference between tu- tulu and kodava and kannada so kannada cannot be super imposed on the other parts of the languages now also various organizations representing kodava and tulu languages in kodagu and your coastal karnataka regions they are actually preparing for legal battle let's see kaise evolve hota hai aage ka pura process now tulu <coughs> organizations they have already been protesting against it and languages se related indian constitution of india mein there is a very important section called 8th schedule of the constitution so tulu speakers have been demanding for very long to include tulu in the 8th schedule of the constitution now state government has brought this bill which has endangered their this demand altogether and yahan pe aur issue nikal ke aa raha hai If we talk about administrative languages, according to States Reorganisation Act of 1956, your Kodava and Tulu languages, okay, they were used for administration 
they were used as a part of administration in their respective regions but abhi kannada ko superimpose kara ja raha hai this bill only gives importance to kannada and to use english for administrative purposes like communication with the union government or courts etc but there is no mention of these two languages state government is preparing a bill to legislate now let's see how it will proceed how it will pan out basic jo yahan pe thread dekha ja raha hai it is said that already unesco has declared the language to be in, one of the languages to be endangered this is it is being seen as this might actually bring the language on the verge of extinction altogether so that is the basic concern here right now uh, let's get to your third topic of the day uh, your third topic of the day is one nation one police reform so recently a chintan shivar was organized chintan shivar was organized which was the brainstorming session where state home ministers and top police officers sat together and discussed about the security issues and uh, various other <coughs> important aspects of security that were worrisome uh, and where important decisions are pending and government has to decide for example one of them is afspa one of them is hate speech one of them is fake news one of them is it reg regulations uh, related to security so a couple of topics are there jahan pe iske upar discussion hua also here the idea of one nation one police uniform was promoted was pushed and prime minister has actually pushed for it that it is going to bring a uh uniformity in all the states see basically uh what is the color of police that you usually see the un color of the uniform of the police it is usually khaki but there are some states for example if you see west bengal the police in kolkata they wear white uniforms theek hai the police ki uniform is of white colored so similarly there are n number of states where police ka uniform is alag also there are police officer top police officials who do not wear uniform to their offices altogether once they reach at the peak in their careers right so this is seen as infringement and dono cases mein the government has been pushing for uniformity in the police uniform now here why the uniformity will be better because it will reduce the burden on the state exchequers also it is going to bring homogeneity in the country what are the other topics that were discussed in the chintan shivar so terrorism and naxalism were discussed so this whole red corridor area theek okay, hai this was discussed then nagaland has been appealing and it was concluded that afsa aspa would armed forces special act would be very soon removed from nagaland more areas in nagaland in the future and the whole issue of fake news which have been spreading unrest in the country causing chaos and riots in the country that will be addressed and more reforms will be brought together to keep these things in check now police as you all know it is a, it is a state subject and every state government regulates its own police except the union territories now issue if we talk about issue of police uniforms while police personnel in india are often associated with khaki as i already told you their <coughs> uniforms vary in different degrees in different regions since state governments state governments and even the individuals they by force cannot decide the uniform there needs to be a proper regulation for it which is being pushed here now नैक्सलिज्म की बात आई है आई हैव ऑलरेडी डिस्कस्ड नैक्सलिज्म रेड कॉरिडोर वाला एरिया वेरी डिटेल इन योर इंटरनल सिक्योरिटी टॉपिक्स बट थोड़ा सा लेट मी थ्रो लेट मी सम लेट मी शेड सम लाइट ऑन दिस सो देर आर अ कपल ऑफ गवर्नमेंट इनिशिएटिव विच हैव बन इन प्लेस फॉर टैकलिंग योर लेफ्ट विंग एक्सट्रीमिज्म so there were <laughs> initiatives operations which were led by crpf central Re reserved police forces crpf has launched a couple of operations which are known as operation octopus operation double bull operation thunderstorm and operation Chandra chandrabanda chakarbanda theek hai so uh, prelims mein direct question you might find a direct question uh, which of the agencies has carried out these operations ya name de ke they can ask about which uh, which sector is it related to so you must 
keep on jotting down points, jotting down points and uh, making your prelims and mains notes separately. Right. Basically, these operations were carried out in the districts of Jharkhand and Chhattisgarh. Then there has been Operation Samadhan ya fir Samadhan Doctrine, jiska abbreviations means <laughs> like smart leadership, aggressive strategy, motivation and training, then actionable intelligence, dashboard based KPIs. KPIs are key performance indicators and KRAs key result areas. Then we need to harness the latest technology there needs to be an action plan for each theater and no access to financing jo aapki uh, black money regulate hoti hai which actually feeds this whole notorious areas that needs to be stopped theek hai chintan shivar mein these things were discussed there is a very huge possibility the government of india might push for one uniform uh, uniform for all the police personnel and as soon as there are more developments in this area, we will discuss this topic again. Okay. Your fourth and last topic for today is about Sham Saran Negi ji. Recently he passed away. May his soul rest in peace. So he was India's oldest voter and he died on 5th November at his home at Kalpa in Himachal Pradesh. Right. So he was basically a teacher and uh, he was the last he casted, he recently casted his vote a couple of days ago, right? He was election commission's brand ambassador and he voted for uh, a Himachal Pradesh assembly election through a postal ballot. Specially a election commissioner went to his home and uh, there was a whole ceremony that was uh, done in his uh, commemoration hai, just to honor him. And uh, he was basically a teacher and he has taught a lot of people and he has never ever missed even a single election uh, voting in uh, even, uh, voting even in a single election he has been an ardent supporter of democracy and uh, he, it was the last vote of a man who was 31 when india gained it, it, its independence so we have lost one of the legends his uh, cremation was re, uh, conducted day before yesterday <coughs> and uh, there was a whole a full uh, salute of state honors okay there was a uh, nine gun salute for him and himachal has lost one of its gem and uh, let's hope may his soul rest in peace i hope the topics for today are clear uh, to all of you guys if you have any uh, if you guys have any doubts please mention them in comments and web i'll address your uh, issues so uh, you're saying Demo classes ka link open ne hota hai and suggest something so I can attend these classes and know. See web of description box me there are contact numbers so you can call upon them and you can address your issue. So these people the technical people they will help you out in a proper way. Thik hai? So if you have any other doubt you can mention it in comments we'll uh, try taking up it in next session. Thik hai? Where can I post answers? Ansh, you can post the answers on our website. Website ka link niche aapko description box mein mil jayega. Write your answer, click a picture or you can post it there or you can copy paste your answer. If you are typing your answer, you can copy paste it and post it on our website. Thik hai? Okay, welcome. So, that's all for today. Stay tuned and keep learning, keep watching. We will meet on Monday again. Bye-bye.